hope you all can come back for six or seven more Lewebs. Um, very excited to welcome up our next speaker, who is Sami Ben Hassin. Um, he writes a blog that's called The Art of Living, and he's also the president for a not for profit that fosters development in Tunisia. And uh, just make sure this one's working. Yeah. Is that working? I think so. Perfect. And yeah. uh, I'd like to welcome again uh, Sami with How to Lead a Fabulous Life. So, how can you lead a fabulous life? Of course, you've heard it everywhere. Do what you love and do it often. But really, how are you going to do it? First of all, you need ideas, all kinds of ideas, all sorts of ideas. Steven Johnson has studied where all the good ideas seem to come from. And he has found one common characteristic between all the great innovators like Darwin and else. All of them had many hobbies. They used to draw, to play instruments of music, to do chemical experiments, all sorts of things. And since they were used to live on the edge of so many areas of knowledge at the same time, all the ideas that they were getting from their hobbies would juxtapose it between themselves, would clash between themselves, and this is just how innovation is born. And then again, you need the right environment to foster the good ideas. Are you going to get them just staying in front of your computer? Of course not. You need to go outside and walk. And Rousseau just agrees by saying that my mind only works with my legs. And then again, you, do, you need to do something else. You can take a retreat once a year, just like what Bill Gates used to do. He takes all the papers that he needs to read, and then he will read and comprehend all the knowledge in about one week of writing. And then here is one tiny action for you. You need a Spark notebook. This is just a notebook where you will be taking notes of your ideas, nothing else, just your ideas. This is not a journal, and you need to read it often. And from time to time, the ideas will just pop up in your mind, only asking to be implemented. So then, after you implemented the idea, you need something else. You need to uh, go and uh, go to action. I will tell you about the story of Maji Dain. So Maji Dain went to Nepal to devastate Nepal, and then she just saw a little girl of eight carrying a bag of rice who was bigger than her. And then she started crying. She said, at her age, the only thing I was thinking about is my dance lessons. So she asked her parents to send her all the money that they kept apart just for her studies. And she built an orphanage starting from this. So what Majidon was saying is to be relentlessly resourceful, just like what Paul Graham said. And then Majidon has another characteristic, that she was observant, observant of everything going on around her. And you need to be like this, actually. You need to observe, not just to see what's around you. You need to have a constant, a constant vigilance of the mind. So here is three tiny actions that you can apply right away. First one, print this out. Do one thing every day that scares you. And then you can take drawing lessons, actually, to improve your awareness of what's happening around you. And then if you've got any limiting beliefs, even if you don't got, just go and see a therapist. This will really help you for life. Then again, from time to time, you will be afraid. And what you need to do is really to be aware of the shortness of life. This will really help you. Science agrees with that. It's saying that being aware of mortality would just help you to reprioritize all your goals and all your targets. And then you will gain something much better, which is lucidity. You will be able to see the infinite importance of every, every second of your life. And then you need something else. You need accountability groups. This is a group of people, a group of mutual improvement that will meet once a week and they will just share their goals and will hold accountable to each other. Benjamin Franklin used to do it and he called it Ginto. But here is a more contemporary example. This is the PayPal mafia, all the guys that went wealthy after PayPal went public. And then even after that, they continued to help each other and they went on to create some of the most successful companies of Silicon Valley, like YouTube, like in LinkedIn. They stayed super connected. So here is one tiny action again. Just reach out today to a group of friends, send them an email and ask them, let's meet once a week. Let's hold accountable to each other. And please, you need something very important. You need to speak to each other with radical honesty. Just say things as they are. Just have a child mind. And don't just have a child mind during the accountability groups. Always have this mind. This, in other words, this beginner mind. 
you need always to see things as if you are seeing them for the first time. You can take the example of Amy Cadman from Pixar. She said to always drop the first thing that comes to mind, then the second thing, then the third thing, and then when, once you get rid of everything obvious, then and only then you can all really create stuff. And then there is this comments by Jonathan Rosenberg about an article about the leadership lesson of Steve Jobs. And he said, I've known Steve Jobs for 30 years, and the real lesson, it's not like focus and talk to people, that kind of thing. The real lesson is just to drop all the preconceived ideas and just open yourself to the raw of experience going through you. This is, this is what it really means by having this beginner mind. And then last thing, you've heard some of this already, but until now, it didn't really work out for you. You know why? Because there is one missing component. There is the constant training of your mind, the daily exhortation of all these rules. You need to review them every day. You need to put them in striking formats, like maxims, like personal stories. And then you need to review them every day. And you need to take flight every day for a moment that can be brief, as long as it is intense. I wish you a fabulous life. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy Benassin. It's very inspiring.